one of my favorite places to visit in Paris is a museum where your attention is caught between both the incredible art collection and the history and architecture of the building itself, the Musée d'Orsay. If you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I love repurposed buildings, and the Musée d'Orsay is an incredible example of a building that once came very close to being torn down. It was originally built as a railway station, and it opened in 1900 in time for the Universal Exhibition. It functioned as a train station with a built-in hotel until 1939. By that time, the platforms had become too short for the longer, more modern trains that were being used. After 1939, it served a number of different purposes. During World War II, it was a mailing center for sending packages to prisoners of war. Then those same prisoners were welcome home here when they returned to Paris after the liberation. It was even used as a movie set for several films, including one by Orson Welles. It was nearly demolished to make way for a new hotel, but it was saved, thank heaven, and plans were made to turn it into the museum you see today. Since its opening in 1986, it's housed the largest collection of Impressionist and Post-Impressionist masterpieces in the world. Even if you don't consider yourself an art lover, as someone who exists in the world, I can almost guarantee that you'll recognize many of the pieces here, like the best-known works of artists like Van Gogh, Renoir, Monet, and Degas. Altogether, there are around 2,000 paintings and 600 sculptures from the period between 1848 and 1914. Expect lots of other people here, because this is clearly a popular place. You can buy tickets ahead online, however, when we were there, there was still a line for reserve tickets, albeit shorter than the line we were in. There are audio guides you can get for 5 euros, however, I recommend downloading a walking tour of the museum on your own phone ahead of time, for free, like the one by Rick Steves. Also, check ahead for concerts and special events here. When we visited, there was a band getting set up to play in the main space, which would be really cool to see. There are a couple of cafeteria-type places to grab a bite, as well as a fancier restaurant which is located in the dining hall of the former hotel. Even if you're not eating, it's still worth going to take a look and imagining people eating here before jumping on a train downstairs. Another point you don't want to miss is the big clock at the top that has a spectacular view over Paris right over to the Sacré-Cœur Church in Montmartre. It's a very popular spot to snap a photo. Nearby is a big beanbag chair that kind of looks like a comfy baseball glove where you can give your feet a break. To fully appreciate the history of the building, make sure to stand high on one end so you get a good look at the curved roof and the best vantage point to imagine it as a busy train station with the enormous gilded clock to keep things running on time. I also recommend checking out the model of Paris that's underneath the floor and gives you a bird's eye view of the city, plus the exquisitely detailed model of the Paris Opera House that was built back in 1862. If you've been to Musée d'Orsay, I'd love to hear about your experience. And if you saw one of your favorite paintings or sculptures in this video, please leave me a comment and tell me what it is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for lots more travel adventures with Mark and I. We've also made a bunch of other videos about Paris, so if you'd like more ideas on where to go and what to eat, check them out in the description box. I always feel inspired after visiting the Musée d'Orsay, so I hope you feel the same after this little peek inside the museum. Thanks for watching!